All right, not a bad week. All right, it's time for Financial Focus with our analyst Steve Buden. And of course, one of the big things when it comes to our money and folks' money is the shutdown that is yes. now lifted, but cost a lot, apparently, you were saying. 11 billion is the initial count. Now, the estimate is that 8 billion may come back as the federal workers get reimbursed for lost paychecks, mm -hmm. but now they estimate about 3 billion has been lost. And I think that number is extremely low. Okay. Because that, that's really the tangible, countable cost of missed meals in restaurants, missed mm -hmm. deliveries on items. But things like airline routes that have not been approved or construction permits that have not been approved, mm -hmm. those are things that add billions to that, in my opinion, and you just can't quantify it. But, for example, if Southwest Airlines could have had a new route approved a month ago versus today, oh. that's 30 days of flying that they lose out on. Okay, interesting. I mean, 11 billion, yeah. that's a lot of money. And in three weeks, we'll be doing this again. Yeah, we could be. Yeah. All right. So we'll keep you posted on that one. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the corporate earnings report. Uh, what did that show? Yeah, so the first quarter uh, earnings are coming out, and we're seeing that. The thing that uh, struck me was a big company, Caterpillar. Mm -hmm. They're the world, one of the world's largest heavy machinery makers, and more than 50% of their revenue comes from overseas. So they're a good bellwether as to how things are going. And they came out with a really weak report today, basically saying, we're bringing in some good revenue, but the tariffs that have been implemented are really hurting our sales and our profits. So it's just a shot across the bow to the you know, politicians and economists that they need to resolve some of these trade issues because a big company like Caterpillar, when they warn about things going forward, it has a ripple effect throughout the economy. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Okay, uh, the final thing we want to talk about is what? Sorry, it's not on the prompter. The, um, <laughs> no, the Super Bowl week, the of Super course. The Super Bowl weekend. How did you forget the Super Bowl? Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, I forgot the third topic. Yeah. Okay, Super Bowl weekend, and you and I were saying this could go one way, which right. just like the game, That's or right. the other. <laughs> yeah, you know, so this has the, uh, the good young team, the Rams, versus mm -hmm. the arch rival, evil team, the Patriots. So it really has, it's perfect for Vegas, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of interest in the game. And we all know hundreds of thousands of people come in to watch it for the weekend, which is great. But the early betting, uh, I haven't seen the latest numbers. I don't think you said you have either. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of money going to the Patriots. Right. So in a perfect everyone world. everyone kind of thinks they're going to win, That's right? right. That's right. Tom Brady. And right, all the that. whole yeah. Tom Brady thing. So <laughs> in a perfect world, the sports books get 50-50 equal bets on either side. And then they just make the difference in the odds that they charge, right? Mm -hmm. It's called the VIG. But there's a lot of money going on New England so far. And if the Patriots win, you know, it could cost the sports books some money. If the Rams win, it's really good. But the sports books don't like to take that kind of risk normally. They'd right. rather just have it 50 50. They're guaranteed a, a decent profit and they move on. But don't you make more if you bet against the Patriots? No, well. If they're favored to win? Are they favored to win? The Patriots are favored. Right now, so, I think the line is about two and a half points. But you have to lay the same amount on the same on a regular bet. Okay. And usually it's about 10%. Now, it. It, it changes with point spreads and all that stuff. But normally, it doesn't cost you any more to bet the favorite or the underdog. But that 10% difference is where the sports books make their money. All right, this is why I don't hit the sports book. <laughs> <laughs> Only when my dad tells me to go place right. a bet and gives me money. Well, his $10 <laughs> bets could really move lines. Okay. All right, Steve, thanks. We'll chat with you next week uh, after the Super Bowl, yeah, right? Sure. Gosh, it's a Sunday, yeah. yeah. All right, stay with us, Rebecca, after this.